prelude to Mars going direct after having been retrograde for so long, let alone it being in Gemini for like, I think it's been five months now. I think. <laughs> I have to actually look. Anyway, I'm excited about it going direct and moving forward. I think this week here in January. There again, there I go again, I'm thinking. Man, I gotta get reality and the truth down pat. But anyway, now that we're talk about nebulous babes, Mars, if I remember right. <laughs> Still, I need to make contact with reality here. And that's what it's all about, really. I mean, that Mars is our physical self. I hope you've been taking care of your physical body despite all of the multi-dimensional things that we're involved with. We have Mars going direct that's going to go back, go forward. It already did it once or twice because it's kind of moving like this, you know. So now for the third time, it's going to start squaring Neptune again, which, man, I personally have been having a hard time with Neptune as it's been opposing my Venus at 23. It's like at 23 at 22 right now, but that's close enough, but it's been at 23, and anyway, um, Virgo is, it opposes, um, Pisces opposes Virgo, and so anyway, this Mars is also causing a T-square with that, I'm not excited about that at all, I mean, I know what it is, it's, it's a square to my Venus, so it's like, it's kind of hard to, to feel happy about even the things that you can be, that you're supposed to be getting happy about, you know, even though it's like right there, but anyway, that passes, and you, but so the Mars going direct is just that alone for a lot of people, especially all of humanity as a collective is going to just, we're going to pop up and, and start actually talking about things because Mars and Gemini, it's going to be more communication. Like I, I call it a release of this tension that has just been kind of being receding and receding and, and emotionality. For a lot of people, right, issues, I mean, all of the way since back, clear back in, um, I think, the end of July or the beginning of, of August of last year. So now, communications, and it's not always a, a great thing. I mean, a lot of people don't really know why they even open their mouths, let alone how to. And so what's going on with Mars squaring Neptune, it's going to kind of inch in forward. And I'm thinking there's just going to be more clarity about the gaslighter. And, and you know, I say, watch out, all talking is gaslighting to reality. You know, if we are there, why do we need to talk about it? That's, I'm saying something very real. It's like, ah. <gasps> Now I'm pointing at the mind again who thinks it's more real than just the simple truth as And talking is something that happens when we thoroughly don't understand. We don't have that supreme understanding, which is never not going to be now. Yes, there's a world or word out there that manipulates our has manipulated our, our perception into thinking that so many things are more important than just this well this communication is going to uh, uh, ratchet up for me and you know the, basically the Aries because it's Mars it's been hard in any if it was in any sign it doesn't matter Mars going retrograde is hard for the physical Awareness, you know, especially the Aries, me, I'm being the Aries rising, complaining about how it's been really hard to establish, say, if if, if you were to have an, a disagreement, you know, sometimes, you know, the Aries knows it's like you should say something. They're not free of, of, of just standing by and not saying something. They say something. They're the warriors. If you have your senses on, babe, you say, I am, I am born here. What are you doing with them? Use them. Say something. Do you see something? Do you smell something? Can you taste it? Can you feel it? So that's going to be happening. But with it retrograde, it's been like a, a dud, especially physically for the Aries. Aries is more of a physical person. They're like, well, whatever. I'm going to go do it. While you think about it, you know, you're, um, 
Aries has already done it. And so it's going to um, awaken our physical bodies in, in, a, in a, a lot of ways that has to do with expression, the pent-up emotion, the things that we need to communicate um, that could be on a very, very deep and serious level of communications. And also, the, the other um, thing that is just the, the clouds and, and the billowing out of, like I said, gaslighting, where, okay, so I wouldn't mention it unless uh, we didn't, unless, you know, we didn't have um, Mars going coming up to square Neptune in Pisces once again. It's going to do that before it moves into the later degrees and then gets out of Gemini and moves into uh, Cancer. And personally, I mean, I have, a, I have, um, a little bit of a hang up with Gemini in the late degrees, especially, you know, when it starts to square my Venus, I, I'm a, it's a Virgo and the way that works is just Gemini has to learn from Virgo that there are details that we weed out and we get the better thing. We have to analyze more, get more into it. It's not just about collecting. It's about now sifting through and, and getting, um, the, the better thing, I guess, is the way, you know, the higher quality thing, because yes, um, that's what the earth signs are about, and Taurus likes that idea anyway, and so does Capricorn. They will um, put a price tag on it. But anyway, thanks for listening to this particular cut. It's not about narcissists at all. The poor little things. And the poor people who get caught up in the illusion of people, people, people. Focus on something else in reality that is less of a mirage, like the truth.